Well, here's a common situation today in March of 2022. You have a job opening in your practice. And furthermore, it's been hard to find anyone, let alone someone good. But then something happens. You find a candidate, but they're not a U.S. citizen, and their immigration status is just something that you haven't seen before and you don't really quite understand. Can you move forward or should, or should you move on? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about today uh, with my guest on practice care. My name is Carl White. I am principal at Market Advisory Group, which is a healthcare marketing agency. And I'm also the host of Practice Care, which is about simplified advice, bite-sized advice for the business side of your practice. Today, my guest is Bill Schiller. Bill is, an immigration and is in the Immigration and Nationality Group at Hughes, Sokol, Piers, Resnick, and Dim. He practices immigration law in Chicago, and he also teaches inter international human rights law as a faculty member at Northwestern University. He lectures and publishes extensively in immigration law, and his client base is national. His practice involves the representation of individual and corporate clients, including physicians in a broad range of immigration matters, including non-immigrant and immigrant visas. Bill, thanks for taking the time to come on to Practice Care. Thanks, Carl. So Good to be here. Yeah, yeah. so uh, but what I like to do with, with many of, of, of my guests is just to try to help our, our audience kind of get their feet wet and get into the topic. And I'm going to bet that a good portion of owners of private practices out there don't deal with, with immigration very much, at least on the hiring side. And I'm wondering if you could give us kind of a recent example or a typical example that you've dealt with, with somebody trying to hire somebody else who's, you know, they're, they're foreign national and there's immigration to think about. Sure, that, that's not hard to do at all. I mean, typically <laughs> I'll get... Well, with your resume, I bet that that's well, your job all day I, long, I, right? I'd, I'd say most people who do what I do and, and, and handle the business side of things and, e and even the family side of things, because it really comes down to having employment authorization. Um, I get several calls a day. And, and to me, the most important call is that first call. So I can understand really what the employer's need is. And then sometimes I'll get a call from the individual who's who's gone to that practice or business it could be a restaurant could be a medical practice really any business and will come back and, and tell me hey you know there's somebody we hit it off um there's there's a good fit in terms of the job but they've never done this before <clears throat> so you know when people think of work visas they think of large computer companies and um really it comes down to finding the appropriate visa for the for the the business and I handle a lot of businesses where this is the first one. So, um, you know, this week alone, I had a call with, I mean, it's very timely. Um, it was for a medical practice that found somebody in a specialization that they wanted. And uh, the question was, how do we do this? And it, it becomes an education at that point. So what I tell people is you don't have to figure this one out. It's like, you don't have to, patient wouldn't treat themselves. Um, but just information gather, find out about the business itself, what are your needs, and then we, we see where we can take it. Sometimes it's nowhere, and sometimes it's, it's a no-brainer, yes. Yeah, and, and before we started recording, uh, you were telling me a bit about a, a, an early part of the process is the, the authorities, I'll use that word in a generic sense, they're, they're going to ask you, the business owner, the practice owner, a lot about your practice. Um, and one of the things you said was kind of at the heart of all this is like, if you're going to hire somebody from another country to do a job, you're taking that job, you know, away from a U.S. citizen, even though it's been hard as hell to find anybody, that's what's going on. So you really have to have your ducks in a row and you have to be a solid business as well. Can you just talk a bit more about some of the kinds of things that they're going to ask you and want to know about your practice? Well, if, let's, let's go with the visa everyone's heard of. It's the H-1B visa. And, um, you know, there's March Madness now. And, and, and for us, March Madness ended at noon. And that was a period where there was a registration um, for a total of 65,000 plus another 20,000 U.S. masters um, visas, specialty visas, positions requiring a, at least a bachelor's degree uh, to, to at least enter this lottery. Uh, there's a lottery, they're gonna, they're from whatever number, I, we haven't heard the numbers yet because it literally ended at noon. <clears throat> there's a lottery and there will be 65,000 lucky winners. And those are the, plus the 20,000 American degree holders. And those will be people who get the visas. 
that's for the whole US for this fiscal year. So um, as far as um, what we ask first, and in, in these are from each business owner, we want to make sure that you're running your business properly, that you have revenues, that you have a need um, for this individual, that the position requires at least a bachelor's degree. Um, it could be a bookkeeper position will not work. It's got to be an accounting position requiring an accounting degree. So there's a level of sophistication there. So there, the government's going to want to see that you're paying your taxes, that you're showing your revenues, um, and that you have a need for this worker. So there's um, what we basically do is we take a step back and we look at it like the government would. And, and when you say, you know, paying your tax, I mean, it sounds obvious when you say it, but just, just to ask the question to get the answer, why do they care about, you've got the need, you've posted the job, why do they care about the rest of your business? Well, there's an, and, and there's kind of this false perception out there that you're, um, that people who hire individuals say on this H-1B visa are hiring cheap labor. You have to pay what's um, known as a prevailing wage, which is essentially, a, a, what's it's 125% of the prevailing wage. And then you have to show your ability to pay. So if, you're, um, if you've produced no revenue, it's a, it's, it's a new company, you know, the startups, if there are people starting new practices, then there's gonna be a challenge there. So it's, uh, you know, I've, I've been looking at other businesses. I've, I've clients who um, are doing very well, but they their financial records don't reflect that. I don't know. I don't want to know more about that. But it's um, <laughs> as long as you're doing everything properly, you should be fine. If you have a viable, not necessarily thriving business, you're you're paying staff, um, and you see somebody that you want to hire, then we can look at these visas. But I think the um, common thread in most worker visas is we need to show the the employer's ability to pay okay yeah immigration is not going to give it to you if 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 you've got no history got it got it and in so, so there's there's two sides here okay i'm going to want to know about the employer in this case a medical practice and i'm going to want to know about the beneficiary or the employee um, with the beneficiary, there are questions I need to ask is what is their immigration status here? If they have no status, that could be a deal killer. Um, they, you need to be in status in order to change status. A lot of the, the folks you're going to be looking at are international students, which is a phenomenal, not only because I teach in Northwestern, but I, I, I do the immigration work for a lot of universities. And um, the undergraduates, graduates, uh, doctoral students come out with employment authorization. So they'll get their degree and then they get a, a one year employment authorization document. You can hire them on that. So I'll say, well, okay, is this person gonna get, do they get OPT, optional practical training? If they have that employment card, you can employ them for a year. There's more that goes into that, but that's that's that a great, great, great way to have, have a valuable, valuable employee for that year. If they're in the STEMs, and that would affect a lot of the medical practices, um, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, I, you hopefully all know what STEMs are, um, but then, then there's another extension of that one year. So you have an employee who um, could be an important part of your growth. And then from there, we try to get them into say the H-1B visa. Okay. So there's, it's two, side, two sides of the, of the coin we need to look at here. Okay. And, and probably three and even four. Yeah. And, you know, in, in a normal job market, I'll say a pre-COVID more rational market, things could still move fast. I mean, I've, in prior careers, I've been in hiring roles and sometimes it felt like it took forever, but it was still kind of moving quickly, particularly if a candidate has more, you know, competitive offers or looking at more than one opportunity, which is certainly the case today. You know, 11 million jobs open, five and a half million people looking like I said earlier, that means it's certainly the, you know, the candidate's market. Um, how long can can this take for you know a practice that's looking for somebody um, to, you know, if it's a, if it's an American citizen, it's you make the offer, right? And you can sure. you can make it all that in there. But what's how long can this take if you've got to figure out the immigration side? Well, it depends. So that's why it's so important that we know about the individual you're interested in hiring. You know, generally we'll say what's well, 
let's have a, if we could have a look at their documentation. A lot of times we'll see it through the employee themselves. If they're currently in a status, say again, H-1B specialty worker, and they want to transfer, um, you can prepare the application, file the application, and under a concept called portability, they can move over to you directly once it's filed with some risk. And the risk is that, um, that it gets approved, but during the pendency, they could move over. And it's it's the idea is that there is no slavery in this country, they should be able to move. So the first question is what's their status? If they have that status already, then um, it could be relatively quickly. Um, you Part of the offer would be, or the agreement would be that um, that, that individual is qualified, um, you get this on file, and then once we have a filing receipt, they can move. And, and I got to caution you, you really should work with um, an attorney. It doesn't have to be me. There are many, many out there, but it's you don't want to mess with this. Now, if you have an employee who says, I'll tell you, I'll make this easy for you. I'll, I'll pay for it. There are certain visas the Department of Labor requires that you pay for, and um, you'd be violating Department of Labor laws if, if you let that individual pay. Um, so that you can't really, um, there's a responsibility here and there's costs. So it's- I never thought of that actually until you just said it, that the yeah. candidate would offer to pay for the, the costs of getting the visa. Well, that's, I mean, I'll, and getting back to the first question you asked me, you know, give me an example. Most, I wouldn't say most, but a super majority of the calls I get are, are first time, I've never done this before. Mm -hmm. And, um, Nobody wants to deal with this. It's you've got a busy day. You've got your you're running your business. Hopefully, you have an, an admin doing that for you. Um, but the last thing in the world you want to do is is figure this out. So the foreign national may say, you know, I, I'll get my own attorney. I'll pay them. You have to be paying the cost for certain visas, H one B visa, and certain permanent residents. Anything so you, done with the Department of Labor. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you could be getting yourself into trouble. Correct. And it's also good that you get proper advice. So it's that could turn into a situation where there's joint representation. Um, you any attorney who's who's in that situation owes you the same duty. So it needs to be a very transparent form of communication. So the Absolutely. duty is to you because you're the petitioner. So you just, you don't, you don't say you, you guys take care of it. Um, you're the petitioner, you're signing paperwork, um, you're taking full responsibility. You're saying you're going to pay a certain wage and, 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 and not to scare you. There, there are easier situations or individuals with employment authorization. There are people here who've got asylum, they have employment authorization or marrying a U.S. citizen, they have employment authorization. So there are other documents where this could be a, a very easy hire. Okay. You know, it comes down there to your I-9. And, and at that point, um, you know, people fill, fill in the paperwork. You need to make sure you're doing that. And I'll, I'll leave all that to a labor lawyer. Right. But like, like so many other things in life, case by case, depends on what the individual circumstances are. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and, and not to, not to, not to um, simplify things, but what I, what I tell people, it comes down to the cards here. And um, what we need to do is we see what we have, we step back, um, explain the law, and then we see, well, what can we do with the cards that we have here? And we don't, you know, in, in, in representing a company or a practice, we're not going to take chances is in, in terms of, you know, no candidate is that good where they're going to get your business in trouble. That's a headache you do not want to have. But if no. there's talent out there, we figure out how to get it. And sometimes the, the best answer I give you is no, it's yep. not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. And you were, you're telling me also uh, before we started recording, there's some crafty people out there and uh, you know, some who will even say, Hey, what if I just, vo you know, volunteer for the job air quotes. And then we kind of figure out some payment on the side. Um, what's your reaction to that? I wouldn't use the word crafty. Uh, okay. <laughs> generally put your, put your, put your sort of your feet in the shoes of, of, of certain individuals and it's, it's a system that's really hard to navigate. And, um, you know, there are, there are people in this country who are, who are the best and the brightest and they want the opportunities. And, you know, sometimes 
folks want to shadow or volunteer, but if, if that comes down to employment, then that's a problem. So um, it's something you need to be careful about. And again, you something you might want to just talk to your, your, if you have an attorney who could speak to a labor lawyer or um, an immigration lawyer, it's a no brainer. It's a five minute answer. So yeah. tell me, this is the answer for this is too long, but are there circumstances under which you could volunteer and it would be okay to do? Or well, there's always a, uh, hang on, we got to have a look at this. There are, there, as far as international students, again, a plug for them. Mm -hmm. We've got great universities here, all kinds of great universities, something called curricular practical training, um, where they, as part of their curriculum, they can work, um, they can volunteer. Um, as part of their academic programs, there's optional practical training where you would have to pay them. So there's, um, it, there are certain um, internships pursuant to academic programs and pursuant to certain work status that would work as far as the volunteering. But if somebody's here on a tourist visa or something like that, it's, it's really not proper in most circumstances. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, we could go on for a long time because it's a it's such an hiring the right people we'll edit that out later hiring the right people that's my... i i agree fully yeah is is, is the most important thing um but in the interest of kind of bringing this home are there is there first of all is there any question you think i should have asked you but did not oh well, it's again cliche it's like it's like the chicago weather go ahead let me, let me start that. We'll pause. Let me yeah. hang on a second here. Well, Gosh, you're killing me. I, I gotta love. It. I love it. We we Shit, got a where dog. did we leave off? <laughs> where the probably a squirrel ran by. No, so, my uh, I I my daughter tried to come in, and oh, uh, that that ignited that's dog. A, yeah, it was in his we, cage. We I've learned we've, that much. Yeah, we've got we've got one too, and it's um, my wife's. She's in publishing, and everybody. She meets with all the high level people, and every, they all have dogs in their laps, and it's it's kind of a this whole COVID thing has been very fun. Oh, no, it was, <laughs> well, then my, my wife was going to pick her up, but she got dropped off by somebody else. So my wife, and I texted my wife, just remember, you can't come in till four. Because... I, I've got, I've got four girls in my basement who aren't allowed to say a word, 15 year olds. Well, if you're going to forget that one, I'm, I'm listening. No, that's not going to, it's not yeah. going to last very long. <laughs> you're asking for water to flow uphill. So, so we okay. left off. So with... uh, something about, if, is there any questions? That, yeah. Um... One or two. Okay. So, um, um so bill we could you know important topic hiring it's always about the people this even more so okay so let me get back into it i'm going to do a little pause and then come back into it and it's mm -hmm. the wonder anything you think i should have asked you but didn't i think that's the first one i think i'm just gonna do that one again um i'm trying to think if i even have anything um you could say like no I'll... i think we covered it all well we didn't but no i um, you know <laughs> yeah. for the for the for the level of depth we went into that's fine okay okay all right yeah. pause Well, Bill, we could obviously with a topic like this, it's always, you know, hiring is always about getting great people. Um, this even more so because there's the added kind of wrinkle or, or other things to think about with regards to immigration status. But, you know, in, in the sort of given the depth of things that we talked about, is there anything you think I should have asked you, but just didn't? Um, I We've covered it really very well in, in at least I think in, in the few minutes that we've we've had this conversation, 
I think it's one of these things where it's what are good sources? How do I follow this? Is it's a great was a great thing to ask. That's usually when I give talks um, to universities and, and to go in and speak to HR people, they're, they're like, how, how do I follow this? Um, you know, I think developing, and this isn't a sales job, believe me, um, if you want to, but it's, it's, it's good to have a good relationship and, and not even to, uh, having to retain somebody, find a good website to follow uh, for an attorney that you trust. It's also the American Immigration Lawyers Association is, is an excellent um, source to follow immigration law and um, USCIS, the government itself, has is, is got pretty decent press releases, but this stuff changes like the Chicago weather. Um, you know, we had, um, I, I've posted three times in the last 72 hours about different programs for individuals from Ukrainians, Afghanis, um, and with the H-1Bs situation. It's, it, there's, there's opportunity. And you, if you have somebody, it, it isn't, it, unless you're the employee, him or herself, there's really no reason for you to follow this unless you see yourself hiring. Sure. And, um, those are really good sources. You know, what I tell people a lot of times is, you know, here's my phone number. Um, just shoot me a text. You don't have to follow this. I'll, I, I follow it every day. And you believe me, you don't want to follow this and it's going to change anyway. So um, good sources is, is a question um, that people usually ask when I speak to groups and I've usually put them um, on my PowerPoint and go ahead and contact them. Okay, great. Yeah. And then the other question that, that I always ask, and you answered part of it is, if we step back from this, and so, you know, listeners who are, who are in need of hiring and they want to explore this pathway, what are one or two tangible things you would advise them to do that they could do as soon as they're done listening? I think one of them is find yourself a good immigration attorney and just start to, you know, this is not, I, I forget the exact wording of the saying of, you know, he who is rep, represents himself, what is it, has a fool for a client or something. Um, but, you know, in, in matters of, this is so specific and it changes so much. Um, not that doctors want to become lawyers on the side, but you really, I would think the first thing is just find yourself a good immigration attorney um, so that when the need arises, you've got somebody to go to and do it before you need it. Like so many other things in life, get prepared, do it before you need it. So I'm going to say the first one is, but are there other things that you would say that, you know, the owner of a practice um, who's in need of hiring and wants to explore this path should do, you know, today or say Monday morning? I'd say focus on your business. Um, just growth, um, keep good systems, build your revenues. Um, you, you, you find yourself in a position, most practices I work with are in a position where they they need somebody based on their growth and they have exciting plans. This is part of the plan to grow. So same thing, you, you, you walk into, these days you walk into a restaurant and, and it's, it's, it's hard to find a server or there are, everyone's running around and there's, it's gotta be hard to grow when, when that's a situation. That's part of what we're seeing now in terms of um, worker shortage. But if you are, are you're staying focused in your business and you're um, doing what you need to do and it's, it, it becomes bigger and bigger then you're, it's, it's, it's not going to be difficult to sell to the government. At that point, we need to find, you need to find um, a good candidate. And from there, assuming underlined bold um, with blinking lights, assuming the visas are available, then we can make it happen. Right. If you're not taking care of business and um, not doing what you need to do, then it's, um, it becomes much, much more difficult for us. Right, right. Well, Bill, thank you again. Thanks for taking some time out to come on to practice care with the H-1B visa ending just a couple of hours ago from uh, when we recorded this. I really do appreciate it. We will put all of your contact info in the show notes. So anybody who wants to get a, a hold of Bill, uh, his, his phone number uh, will be in there. His email will be in there um, as well as his website. And so it's easy to get a hold of him. And a couple of other points just before we wrap up. First is if you're like Bill and I and someone who, who serves those who own private practices, or if you are a private practice owner yourself and you have 
expertise or an experience that you think other private practice owners would benefit from, we want you on Practice Care so that you can share your wisdom with the world and others can get that benefit. If you go uh, in the show notes, will be a link to where you could go to uh, tell to schedule yourself, tell us what your, your, what your story is, what you want to talk about. Please do so as soon as possible so that we can get you scheduled as soon as possible. And finally, please subscribe to Practice Care on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks very much. And until next time.